welcome back everyone to another competition build showcase i am going to go over all the details that you need to know for the upcoming competition happening on april 9th 2024 which features the salmon panini meta salmon panini is a new item that has been added to the game it can be crafted in the cafe and it requires one salmon one baguette three lettuce head one tomatoes and one cheese and it has a craft time of 45 seconds so i'm going to go over all the details that you need to know for this competition and then i have a build showcase prepared to give you an idea on how to create a competitive design for the competition as always you can find the official details in the gala games discord and you can find an invite link to the gala games discord in the description of the video meta is to sell salmon panini trade time is 20 seconds and one gasoline per trade the biome we are given is a plains facing the west the biome edges are an ocean on the north and the river on the east and then the south and west is lanes biome open world edges and they also provided us with an image of how the starter town looks like so you're going to start off with this you do start off with two salt fields that have all the water that they need and they are on a green craft timer because they are right next to the ocean which is providing the three salty that they need in order to be on a green craft timer and you also have two farmers to pick up the brine from the salt fields take it to the silo and you also have two windmills that are are on a green craft timer because they are not being impacted by any shade so this is the perfect setup in order to start making salt which is convenient because salt is what is cash boosted for this competition normally it sells for 2250 cash for each salt but for this competition it'll give more than triple that it's going to give 8,000 for each salt which makes it a viable choice for you to sell in order to get all the cash that you need for your final design now if you're thinking of doing gold that is still viable because gold can be crafted much quicker the only problem with salt is you can only do so much before you have to rely on red timer windmills and then it's just not as efficient you're just going to need more windmills in order to do that so if you are going to go the salt route to get all the cash that you need try to stick to green timer windmills at first and eventually once you work on your final design which will more than likely incorporate mostly red timer windmills then you would use all of those red timer windmills to make as much salt as you can but it is possible that if you were to go the gold route you would probably make more cash that way because you don't have to worry about red timer forges since the forges don't care about shade so you can have them right next to each other and either way you're going to need a wood for the salt or for the gold that you could make salt actually requires more wood so when you compare the two you're probably wasting about the same amount of wood for the money that you could make so that's all the advice i can give you in terms of what you could do to get all the cash that you need for the competition the rewards are going to be the standard gala rewards for reaching the top 1200 in the leaderboards and a great thing that was mentioned with this announcement is that from now on on Wednesday instead of them giving us partial information because they like to call it leaky Wednesday they are now going to give us the full information for the following competition so now we get the information two days sooner than we would before we would usually get all the information for the competition on Friday now we will get it on Wednesday which is great so that gives the community more time to to plan for the upcoming competition before i move on to the build showcase i want to talk about the nft that is going to be released for this competition as well as another nft sale they're going to do so the nft coming out with this competition is called the spring garden this is a rare nft and the utility is that whenever you place this in your town it provides up to two passive lettuce heads and like i mentioned lettuce is a new item that has been added to the game so this is like a stand and that provides a passive of the new item it doesn't require a road and it doesn't cast any negative proximity effects it just cast the two passive lettuce heads to the tiles next to it so this is going on sale in the galley game store it's already available there are 500 in supply and it costs 200 dollars each so my thoughts and opinions on this one is since this is a brand new item this is the only utility for it right now is in the salmon panini craft but of course more than likely they're going to add more items that require lettuce in the near future up to two passive lettuce heads is not that much i do believe that in the future they 
are going to add other rarities that give you a higher passive and probably higher effects but of course they probably have a higher price tag as well just to talk a little bit more about lettuce heads they have a seven minute craft time seven water requirements and they are negatively impacted by shade dirty and salty they are pretty difficult to make they require a lot of space from all the ponds that you need and also all the lettuce fields that you need because they don't craft very quickly so the passive lettuce heads is actually pretty powerful compared to other things like passive wheat or passive sugarcane because those are easier to make so i can see that this nft can be useful for this competition in particular but overall i mean like i said it's a brand new item it, it doesn't have utility elsewhere at the moment just keep that in mind it's very meta specific now the other one i wanted to quickly talk about is the bright wind this is not a new nft but they do have 100 in supply that they reserved from when it initially went on sale and they're finally going to put the rest of that 100 in supply on sale starting on monday april 8th 2024 so there's going to be 100 in supply and these are going to cost 900 dollars each just so you know whenever the bright wind first went on sale the original price was 625 dollars but it had a 20 percent discount for the first week so it actually costs 500 dollars and this nft kind of had a little bit of a controversial topic because whenever this nft first got released it wasn't very powerful so to say they ended up buffing it tremendously so they made it to where the bright wind wouldn't cast any shade and it wouldn't require wood and i believe the, they made the craft time for everything lower so originally the utility for the bright wind was that it didn't care about shade it wasn't negatively impacted by it but it would still cast shade and it would still require wood and i believe it still had the same craft time as a regular windmill the big selling point was that it just didn't care about shade so it would have a green craft timer people didn't think that was an enough so it wasn't really purchased and they ended up buffing it and then it flew off the shelves eventually so it was a pretty popular nft i i believe it is still a popular nft in my thoughts and opinions on this one it's very expensive for 900 but that is what it's selling for in the secondary market closer to a thousand i believe as of recording this video because it has very high utility and with all the new buffs now you know it doesn't cast shade doesn't care about shade doesn't require wood and it crafts stuff faster than everything else it has a lot of utility going for it and this is like the best nft to have for anything that requires windmills which there are a lot of uh, metas that require windmills because of the the flour salt sugar and corn that you can make within the windmills so yes this nft has a ton of utility going for it it's definitely going to increase your production rates in these metas and that explains the high price tag and the low quantity out there if you do plan on purchasing any of these nfts from the galley game store you can use the link in the description of the video as it does help support me i appreciate that so much and let's go ahead and move on to the build showcase this is the salmon panini build that i created it does not utilize any nfts that would impact the production rates but let's take a look at how it's doing this build is doing 29 salmon panini per hour i'm going to scroll through the production monitor so you can see all the production and then i'm going to talk about a couple of the production going on here it has been running for over 16 hours so this is a very stable rate starting with baguettes those are at 33 per hour it is one baguette per seven panini that is definitely enough it's slightly overproducing those cheese is at 31.5 per hour and then we have the lettuce head so that's at 92.2 per hour i am using uh, 87 since i'm making 29 salmon panini so i'm good on that salmon is close to 29 per hour so salmon would be the bottleneck in this case before i talk more about salmon let's look at tomatoes tomatoes is at 54 per hour so that is overproducing that's more than enough so yes salmon is the bottleneck here which means if i were to make 31 
31 salmon per hour. I would be closer to 31 salmon panini per hour. I suppose lettuce heads would then be the bottleneck, but that can easily be fixed. Uh, so let me talk more about how you could improve the salmon for this design. I'm going to talk more about how I'm actually making salmon after this, but in order to improve the production rate for salmon, I do believe that you're probably going to want one more fisherman house added. You could just build it right here. It only casts one shade, so it's not going to negatively impact any of the wind turbines I have. And that would provide another fisherman worker to collect the energy and the fish chum and take it to the wild net fishing in order to craft salmon quicker. I do believe that that's all you would have to do in order to improve the salmon production rates. I just didn't do that tweak because that's the only tweak I would have needed to do. So I'm letting you guys know now so you can further improve this design and then find other ways to hopefully improve it. So the biome is set up like this with the ocean on the north side, but I am going to explain all the production and showcase it like like this because this is how I set it up in the visualizer so for my convenience I'm just going to showcase it in this manner. If you've ever done a baguette build then salmon panini is basically baguettes but you're adding a few things on the side in order to produce the other things that you need. I'm going to start by explaining sugar, flour, and salt production. So you're going to need tractors in order to pick up the relevant crops. So there are eight tractors spread around the town, two sugar cane fields for sugar Sugar cane, three wheat fields for wheat, and six salt fields for brine. The salt fields are right next to the ocean so that they have the three passive salty that they need to be on a green craft timer. And these are all taken to the closest silo, of which there are five silos. So plenty of storage for all of the crops going on. And in order to make the sugar, flour, and salt, you also need wood. So for wood production, I have six loggers. They are all on this corner over here and they're going to pick up the wood from the tree farms. There are 11 tree farms here and then I can explain the sugar, flour, and salt. So starting with sugar, I have five windmills crafting sugar on this side and then closer to the middle, I have 16 windmills crafting flour. This is actually a little bit more than what you need. I am overproducing flour for this entire design, but that is fine. If I don't overproduce flour, then I would would be overproducing wheat in my silos and that means I would have to sell wheat more often. There are other ways that I could have balanced wheat but this is just the way I decided to do it here. And then the other seven windmills are making salt. Four of them are on a red craft timer and the three touching the ocean over here are on a green craft timer because they are not being negatively impacted by any shade. In total there are 28 windmills. The sugar, flour, and salt get stored in the storehouse, of which there are five storehouses. Now I'm going to explain milk and egg production. So there are two ATVs in charge of picking up the milk from the milk barns and the egg from the chicken coop. There are 10 milk barns in this section. Most of them are facing, you know, this side right in front of them. You can see they are rotated to face where most of the meadows are. This milk barn is rotated to face the these meadows and then I have one chicken coop the chicken coop is rotated to face these meadows I mean sometimes I'll go for other meadows that's completely fine but that's just the way I have it rotated and it is important to have at least the milk barns rotated the correct way that way they get to the meadows quicker and they will help with uh, more efficient milk production in total there are 31 meadows in this area and that's it for milk and eggs so moving on to salmon production I have one forklift here and that's because I decided to do salmon production without utilizing passive energy because in order to make salmon you do need energy either if you're using wild net fishing or fishing platform it doesn't matter you will need energy either way wild net fishing requires three energy and fishing platform requires six energy but I'm using wild net fishing on this one so the purpose of the forklift for the salmon production is to pick up energy from the wind turbines so I have two wind turbines on a green crowd timer. Remember that wind turbines are negatively impacted by shade and they 
has to shade so you want to have them separate from everything else and i have one warehouse which is where the energy is being deposited energy doesn't have to be auto sold because the only thing you're using the warehouse for is to store the energy and then i have a seaweed farmer and a seaweed farm of course the seaweed farmer's job is to pick up seaweed from the seaweed farm take it to the closest silo which should always be this one right here and then that seaweed can be used in order to craft shrimp as well as fish jump so i have one shrimp farm right here and the aquaculturist is in charge this one right here the aquaculturist is in charge of picking up seaweed and taking it to the shrimp farm the shrimp would then go into the seafood warehouse which stores salmon fish chum and shrimp and then you have the items that you need in order to craft fish chum utilizing this one mixing tent right here for the actual salmon that's made in the wild net fishing you do need one fisherman in order to manually take the energy and the fish chum to the wild net fishing but i did mention earlier that i would recommend having having a second fisherman house because that might actually increase the amount of salmon that you're making because it is a lot of work for just one fisherman to do you can see they have to take care of all three of these before they start crafting salmon and repeat the whole process so you'll still get a good rate with one fisherman house but definitely two i think would improve it even further so there are three wild net fishing they require three energy and one fish chum in order to craft salmon and salmon is crafted in three minutes so that's it for salmon production but i wanted to go back to the seaweed farm because seaweed in the seaweed farm is actually positively impacted by salty same as salt fields so if you have it right next to the ocean it would actually have a craft time of five seconds i don't i have it one space away from the ocean so it has too salty so it crafts seaweed in 10 seconds but it's completely fine because this makes all of the seaweed that i need in order to potentially hit around 30 or 33 salmon panini per hour so long as i also have the seaweed farmer house right here because it basically makes it so that the seaweed farmer is always working so by the time it deposits the seaweed on this silo and it goes back home the seaweed farm will have produced another seaweed constantly following that route forever and it, it's picking up the seaweed efficiently that way the next is baguette production so mostly baguettes can consists of the flour, sugar, salt, milk, and eggs that I just mentioned. And for baguettes, I have four bakeries, two making butter, which are on opposite sides, one making dough in the middle, and one making baguettes. I'm not going to go over and explain all these items again, but they basically grab everything that they need from the nearby storehouses. Now I'm going to explain cheese production. So cheese requires rice from the rice field. So I have one rice field right here. Remember that the rice field requires eight water to grow, but 10 water to build. Build. So when you initially were to build it in this spot, you would need to supply two water to it. So you would want a well made somewhere. I don't have a well in this final design, but you could just have it right here. Or you could have it in one of the spots that I didn't use. Although these spots have a lot of dirty. Dirty would negatively impact the well if you do have it over there. You'll collect husk rice from the rice field. Uh, it should usually go on this silo right here. Actually, yeah, as long as this silo is not full, it will go here. And then I have one mixing tent here that is crafting white rice. It does have the one passive energy from a nearby power plant. That white rice should get deposited here. And then I have a sauce facility crafting rice vinegar. So it'll quickly pick up the white rice and it also picks up a sugar cane since most of the sugar cane goes on this silo. And it has the two passive water that it needs from this pond. And that makes the rice vinegar, which is then used on this mixing tent over here in order to make cheese utilizing that rice vinegar and two more milk so milk is balanced between making cheese and making the butter the way to balance it best i believe is to watch your white rice production rate so i have enough husk rice in order to make 31.5 white rice which means that i can only ever make 31.5 rice vinegar which means that i can only ever make 31.5 cheese 
that's how I balance the cheese production rates. The rest of the milk will go into butter. I believe this is the best way to balance it out. The way you have your rice field and mix and temp perhaps placed will impact the amount of white rice that you would make. And that explains three of the five items that you would need for the salmon panini. So now to explain salmon panini production, that is made in the cafe and I have two cafes, one right here and one right here. Originally, I tried this with just this cafe and it was only able to make 25 per hour because the worker had to walk long distance in order to pick up the salmon since it was across the town. So I ended up making two of them, which works better. So the only other items I haven't explained yet is lettuce heads and tomatoes. Lettuce heads are made in the lettuce fields over here, of which I have nine. They require seven pass of water in order to grow and the tractor should take them to these two silos right here so they'll be close to the cafes and then tomatoes are made in this one tomato farm right here it is negatively impacted by dirty but not negatively impacted by shade so in this case this one is negatively impacted by one dirty which means it makes a tomato every 60 seconds this is done on purpose so that i won't make too many tomatoes now it is still over producing tomatoes like i mentioned earlier i would really only need 30 of them but i'm making 54 so i do have the tomatoes on auto sell and they will generally you know jam up the silo so the silo takes in mostly sugar tomato lettuce heads and rice husk so there's a lot going into this one but that's why you don't want to make too many tomatoes and that's why i have it being negatively impacted by dirty here and i have it closer to where the cafes are so i have it over here on this awkward spot so that explains salmon panini i'm going to explain lumber although you don't need lumber in this build i have the setup for lumber and that's just to make the lumber that was needed in order to build all these buildings but at the very end you don't require the one lumber mill that you could use to make lumber in this spot right here and you don't require the lumber yard i kept them and the build still works completely fine but i just wanted to mention that you do not need these two buildings right here as for gasoline production i have the standard passive gasoline production set up with two water pumps two power plants a refinery in between them crafting gasoline and the refinery to the side crafting petroleum like i mentioned earlier i do have a forklift and that forklift in addition to picking up energy is also picking up crude oil from these three oil pumps and taking it to the fuel storage where you will store your gasoline petroleum and crude oil and this is the trade setup one trade depot 20 second sell time one gasoline per sale it's making plenty of gasoline in order to sell everything that needs to be sold here's how the auto trade looks like like i mentioned i don't have energy on auto trade i don't have wood lumber or gasoline on auto trade everything else is on auto trade quantity of either 10 or 12 mostly it's the crops at 12 with the exception of tomatoes because i'm going to make a lot of those anyways and some of the items are also on 12 but they could as well just have been 10 i'm not going to go over every single item i'm just going to scroll through here so you can see it but basically 10 or 12 are good numbers to have for auto trade here's what the build looks like on the visualizer total cost is about 11 million wages are at 11,470 per minute you will have no issue paying for all of the wages once you are done with your design you can find the file for this visualizer on my discord server and an invite link to my discord server is in the description of the video if you've never built a seafood warehouse it does require five ice blocks which are complicated to make as it requires a lot of cash in order to get the setup ready to make the ice blocks. I do have a video dedicated on explaining ice block production and the cool proximity effect and you can find the link to that video in the description. Last thing I'll mention before I wrap this up is the nuclear power. So nuclear power usually is the way to go whenever you are making salmon because the fishing platforms or wild net fishing need a lot of energy energy but also they are negatively impacted by dirty so it's not a good idea to have passive energy from a power plant because the power plant casts dirty now the nuclear power provides more passive energy and it doesn't cast dirty so it would be 
perfect for your salmon fishing setup here. However, nuclear power is expensive and also the setup to it is expensive. I was able to have the build cost for this entire design as low as it could be without the nuclear power. And I realized that you don't really need um, to make that much salmon here. Two wind turbines on a green craft timer will make all the energy that you need in order to make at least the 30 salmon per hour for this one. Of course, having a nuclear power to have passive energy would be more efficient for uh, higher production rates. It does take up more time since you do need more cash to get that set up. Just keep that in mind. It's completely fine if you did want to do nuclear power. I don't know if you could do it with the setup that I made here, but in your own setup, you could use nuclear power to provide passive energy for your salmon production. I do believe it would be more efficient to do so. That's all I have for the build showcase. So I hope this was able to help you create a design or improve your current design. If you found this helpful or informative, please leave a like, leave a comment. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so. If you want to play Common Ground World and help support the channel, you can use a link in the description of the video. If you decide to purchase anything for the Gala Games store, it does help support the channel and to help fund the giveaways that I do. As always, I appreciate your support and thank you for watching.